Now, so far, we've already had a Norwegian fame labber, our, our CERN champion, Lillian Smiester, and now we have a Finn, which is particularly impressive given that there are as yet no fame labs in Nordic countries. Uh, now, our Finn is Oskar Ivinko, who won Fame Lab Switzerland, a country with a long and proud tradition of producing Fame Lab champions who are anything but Swiss. Uh, both the most northerly in origin, and I believe just the tallest of this year's finalists. He rates the probability of being taller than him at only 0.2%. Uh, Oscar is a master's student in synthetic biology and biotechnology in Zurich. He says he loves seeing people's face light up when, he gets, when they get something that he's been explaining to them. And the best way he knows to practice his skills is by taking the science questions his 13-year-old younger brother has asked him and turning them into bedtime stories. So settle back, get yourselves tucked in, and enjoy a three-minute tall tale from start to finish finalist, Oscar E. Vinko. Ebola, Ebola, Ebola. He's getting all the attention, but he's just a poser, pretending to be this terrifying and dangerous disease, but in reality, he's nothing compared to me. I kill 50 times more people every single year compared to what Ebola has done during its lifetime. I have 200 million people infected in the world right now, and that number is three times the population of UK. Oh, but where are my manners? I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Plasmodium falciparum but you might know me better by the name Mr. Malaria. I ride in the night with my partner in crime, Miss Mosquito. But we have to be careful, though, because some humans sleep inside nets treated with insecticide. If we get the hit, that's it. When Miss Mosquito bites the victim, I smell the blood, and I dive in. Towards the liver cells, I swim, and then and I penetrate them, and I replicate, and I replicate, until there are 10,000 of us ready to detonate. We burst the cell open, and then we go to hunt red blood cells to get some sweet, sweet hemoglobin and make our army even larger. To get inside a red blood cell, we need these surface proteins. <laughs> They are like a key to get down inside. However, the immune system can detect these things, and then we will be in trouble, and that's why we hide them. And we only reveal them when we need to enter a red blood cell, and this way, the stupid immune system has no idea we are around, and we can do whatever we want. When Miss Mosquito comes for a next blood meal, we get a free ride to the next victim. We have been on this planet for 30 million years, and now humans think they can get rid of us. In 1950s, the World Health Organization de declared malaria eradication efforts, and they wiped us out from US and Europe. But luckily, they forgot to include the list of African countries on the campaign, and that was fine by me. In 1970s, uh, the Chinese uh, scientists discovered a long-forgotten 2,000-year-old malaria therapy involving a drug called artemisinin, and this was real poison to us. Fifteen years ago, the uh, medical companies combined artemisinin with other anti-malaria drugs to make it almost invincible, but the poor, they couldn't afford those pills. They used artemisinin alone and didn't even always finish all the pills. That's how we learned how to deal with artemisinin, and now my brothers in southern Asia are artemisinin resistant. If humans continue to be so selfish and I am unable to make a real global effort, I'm going to use this weakness, get my revenge, and return to rule the Western world. Thank you. Right, Oscar Vinka in character, our first Fame Lab villain, Mr. Malaria, now meets someone <laughs> almost as evil as you. <laughs> um, how can we eradicate you then? That's a good question. Um, I think you have the knowledge and you have the technology, but the people who have things good right now in the Europe, they should. Uh, help those people who are now suffering and make proper treatments because they don't have the resources 
in, in Africa, for example. And that's why I get more stronger, because I be can become resistant to the inventions of the rich people, because they are not used properly. Okay. So, so just helping others, that's one key. Um, you're obviously very passionate about malaria. By <laughs> speaking to the world or whatever who are watching Fame Live, what are you hoping to achieve in practical terms? I mean, you're looking for more funding, are you looking for a research focus? Is there a, a practical object to your presentation? So, I, myself, I study synthetic biology, and, and one great example is how, how the drug artemisinin was made in bacteria to make it available to many people. Uh, but uh, in my talk, I really want to point out that uh, things like Ebola get a massive attention in media. However, it's not the biggest threat. We should, I, I try to keep my voice to point out to people that there are bigger things that you haven't maybe heard of, or you have heard of it, but you have just forgotten because there are more interesting small things that are getting all your attention. Okay, thank you. It's always good to tell somebody from a newspaper group how to write journalism, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no doubt that malaria is a huge problem uh, internationally. What are your predictions in terms of the long-term future of the solution of this? The time frame? Ooh, that's a very hard question. From Mr. Malaria's point of view, I hope to return in 10 years uh, in, in, the, in Europe and the US. Uh, but from humans' point of view, there has to be some really tough fight to, fight to make. Uh, it depends. I think it really requires attention of much wider population than now. So, so the science communicators, it depends on them and also other fem labbers. So, so how could we get the attention of everybody and make a global real effort and be strong, not weak? And Thank you. Just picking up on Matt's question at the start, are you sure you've thought this through? He talked about how to eliminate you. Are you sure the judges, as soon as they get backstage, say, well, we'll get rid of that Mr. Malaria to start with? <laughs> yeah, I thought so. One more time, making us more malaria aware. Oscar Evenko.